What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to our player retraining video. This is going to be a complete video. It's going to be a bit of a long one. That's what she said. But no, honestly, it is going to be a bit of a long one. We're going to be covering goalkeepers, the two types of goalkeepers that you need to look at, all the way from centre backs up to centre forwards. So we're talking wingers, whole players, classic number 10s, the difference between all the play styles, the main three things to think about when you're training a player. And you can follow that template for any similar player. So if you're training up an anchorman, it follows the same pattern, right? Main three skills and stats to give him as well. And we're going to be covering all positions, all play styles, and we're going to start with goalkeepers. If you haven't subscribed already to the channel, please do. Don't forget to smash that like button. Let's get into it. So we'll start with goalkeeper in check. Firstly, if you have a goalkeeper that's going to be taller than 190 centimeters, you don't need to worry too much about his jumping. But the rest of his stats, his jumping and his reach, you don't need to worry about, okay? So for these stats here, yes, you can still get them as high as you possibly can, but you're going to be more focused on his goalkeeper awareness and his reflexes. So I would probably try and get his reflexes up as, as, as high as possible. You're going to have 97 reflexes. You're going to have 92 awareness. We'll get that up another tree. You're going to have the goalkeeper catching up another bit as well, right? So that is kind of where I would go with that. If you wanted to go that route, you can go that very, very simply. Now, you can still, because check is so good, you can still get a goalkeeper that can do it all for you. There's nothing really out of line with this keeper because he goes past 100 overall. Any card, if you've got a card that goes 100 overall, there is no weakness in the card. You can have multiple stats that are over 90, which is the sweet spot for a lot of cards, right? And it doesn't really matter for the goalkeeper. You will concede stupid goals no matter what because of the way the goalkeepers are. Sometimes they'll make unbelievable saves. Sometimes they won't make any saves. But I definitely think Czech is one of the best cards in the game. Now, Czech also follows in to this kind of, you know, Schmeichel, Czech, Donnarumma. Insert any player that you want here that's over 190 centimeters. And that's the way you're going to want to build him. As high as you possibly can, awareness, reflexes, and then secondary, catching and parrying. That's all you need to focus on. You don't need jump and reach as much. Now, I would be, I would be um, open to going a little bit higher with his reflexes here. And I would also probably go with his awareness a little bit more if you wanted to do that. And of course, you can just pop one in there to jump in as well. Um, but I reckon, you know, Oliver Kahn, Neuer, any goalkeeper that's taller than 190 cm, this is the build that you want to go with. Max out his awareness, max out his goalkeeper reflexes. Mix in a bit of manual defending, mix in a bit of manual goalkeeping. Similarly, but quite different, you're going to have Casillas, who's going to be a smaller base goalkeeper. So quite different to um, quite different to check. This Casillas card is not as good, but any card that is under 190 cm or around that, like 191 and under, right? That's not over 191 uh, cm. So you're talking about Iker Casillas, you're talking about Sommer, you're talking about Shea Given, any of those cards that are quite small in goals compared to the big giants like Czech and Schmeichel, you definitely want to get up a little bit of a flip with this. So once we have his goalkeeper awareness at 90, we want to get his reach up higher. That's where we want to go with it. And then we also want his reflexes to be at 90, which is fine. That's going to give us this card. But the trick with having a goalkeeper like this is to get his jumping at least 90 and his reach at least 90. So we are able to get this to 90 or probably even 95. But once we get this here, with the build that we're going to have here, with Guardiola giving a plus 3 to all stats over 85, we're now going to have 90 jumping, 90 awareness, 90 uh, reflexes and 95 reach. We want to reach and the jumping to be higher than Petr Cech's because of the difference in size, stature and player ID and the way that the players actually operate and how they jump and what animations they have. Casillas and the smaller goalkeepers have more animations for saving the ball, but the bigger goalkeepers like Cech and Schmeichel, they have a different kind of build in goals that they cover the space a little bit more differently. So you might notice that sometimes if you're playing with... Um, Casillas, if you're playing with one of the smaller base goalkeepers like Sommer or any of those, they'll be a little bit better at manual goalkeeping, but they'll parry a lot more shots, even if you've got similar stats to Czech, whereas Czech will either, you know, cut the space out, but he'll give a lot of rebounds. And that's because of the way the goalkeepers are built at the moment. I don't know how many times I've scored on Schmeichel where he's literally dropped the ball out of his hands from a hard shot. Compared to Casillas, he'll pop it over the bar or whatever from a save because of um, just the way the goalkeepers are balanced, I suppose. But once you get to this, and if you want to go a little bit higher, you can always go higher with the reflexes. It depends on how you want to train them up. I would definitely prefer the reflexes or else the jump to be higher. That's kind of where I would go with it. Um, goalkeeper awareness is always important as well if you want to go with that route. Um, but I definitely probably would go there. 
Um, if I wanted to go as high as I possibly could with that, I would be even tempted to go into another one with jumping there. And that's kind of where I'd go with it. So you're going to have 93 jumping, 93 parrying and reflexes and 95 goalkeeper reach. And that's going to be the two goalies. So if you look at the difference between these two goalies, right? If you look at the difference between these two goalies, Czech is 196 CM, Casillas is 185. Czech has got 6 kg on him as well. Um, and then also the stats, jumping, Casillas is going to be plus 15 on jumping, the awareness is going to be minus 4, his catching is going to be minus 12, and his par parrying is going to be plus 7. So that's why I said, you might notice a lot of the time with Czech, I've noticed a lot of the time with Schmeichel or against uh, Oliver Kahn, they'll parry the ball, but they won't parry it out for a goal kick or back into you know your opposition, it'll be into the opposition. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, um, but reflexes are going to be huge for Czech, um, but Casillas will feel better manually. Goalkeeper reach then, and the, the reach and the jumping is going to be the two more important, the most important there. So that's going to be the goalkeepers. Next up, we are going to be focusing on our centre backs. So we've gone for a wide variety of centre backs here, where we're going to be playing the most popular, right? Or, or doing the progression points for the most popular setup, which is a four man CB, where every single one of your players can play as a centre-back, but you have Turam and Maldini as your tucked-in centre-backs that can also play as a full-back. So in this case, it's going to be Turam. If we wanted to swap that out here, we can put Maldini into a centre-back position here, like this, and take off Turam, and then bring on Carlos in as a left-back. Or similarly, we can switch this back out to a right-back and go a little bit more defensive by bringing on somebody like Wambasaka. So that's kind of the options that you have there. Usually when I'm going with a centre-back, uh, partnership, I will usually use a destroyer to chase the ball and a centre back that's going to be a passive, more build up kind of, you know, high defensive awareness that kind of controls the line and is controlled by the AI quite a bit. It's kind of repeating the process of you have one ball stopper and one ball winner in midfield with this centre back partnership. So for this with Turam here, I'm going to want to raise Turam's speed and any of your centre backs need a minimum, in my opinion, they need at least 85 speed. Now, if you're playing Torum as a right back, I'll show you a different example with Wambasaka in a second. But this centre back uh, Torum is going to be a hybrid that we're going to be training him up, that we can swap on the fly. That if you know Aldair is down, or we want to put Bergomi out there, or Wambasaka out there, and move Torum in here, Torum is going to be a passive defensive full back, so he's not going to be as aggressive as a destroyer Aldair. But essentially, if you're training up a defensive fullback, you want his defense to be, his aggression and his tackling to be very, very high. We would probably usually go this high with it to get the aggression to about 90. I would probably go his defensive stats a little bit more than that, actually. Um, even if you were to go a little bit higher than you normally would, get his defensive awareness to 90, his defensive engagement to 90, and his tackling to 95. Very, very simple. Torem is a kind of a rare card because he has no weaknesses. You can get, you know, four into acceleration or three into acceleration there and a couple of more into his speed and you're going to have nearly a 90 speed, you know, 84 acceleration, 85. We can pop one more into this if we want to and we're going to have 86 speed. That's going to bring up our attack and awareness and our balance is 75, which is going to make a difference. Huge stamina, huge speed and then the rest, if you want to, you can actually train up his jumping quite a bit if you want to do that. There's no real weakness in this card. Honestly, there's no real weakness in this card if you're training him as a CB. Like, look at the stats that you're going to be having here. 100 tackling, 90 speed, 86 acceleration, 93 stamina, 80 kicking power for clearing the ball, 93 jump, 85 physical contact, 89 heading. You can even go one more with the aerial strength here. He's just a monster of a card. There is no real weakness in this card, lads. That's the problem with when, with all these uh, really, really souped up, souped up cards. There is no method to training these cards wrong. You're just picking what you think looks right for the position that you're looking for. So this is a hybrid right back um, where I'm not going to maximize his speed and acceleration or any of his tight possession or dribbling or anything like that. We could, but I'm going to be playing this Toram as basically our fourth centre back, which is what a lot of the top ranked players do. And he's essentially going to fit in here at home. And then I'll swap this guy out here if I want to do that. For Aldair, it's going to be a very similar process where we're going to be playing him as a centre back destroyer. What you need with a centre back and what you need with destroyers is you do need that defending. So once we have the defending up where we want it to be, which is usually about the 95 mark for the tackling, it's 96 there aggression at 90, we're then going to focus on his speed. So we need to actually put in about 9 into his speed to get that where we want it to go. Um, 
or maybe one more and that's going to bring it to 86 with Pep's build here sometimes you get caught with that that it doesn't track up right 85 speed uh 73 acceleration you don't need acceleration as much but if you play possession i would definitely pop in 75 speed or acceleration to get that kind of a little bit more zippy to respond to the ball you'll see a difference between saliba and rudiger which is down to destroyer versus a build-up but also because rudiger is a little bit more mobile than saliba even though saliba's got huge huge speed again with aldair there is literally no weakness in aldair here you don't need to worry about shooting, passing, or dribbling. Nothing of that. Because once you get the ball with a centre-back that's a destroyer, you're either going to be just blocking the ball and clearing it, or passing it out wide, or hoofing it. That's basically what you need to do. So we could go a little bit more with his aerial here, which I probably would, just to bring that up here. You're going to have 88 jumping, 89 physical contact, 82 heading. And then you can decide where you want to go with that. Yes, you can go to 90 speed with Aldair if you want to. But I probably wouldn't go to 90 speed um with him here because you've got 90 jumping 90 physical contact 90 defensive awareness and aggression and then your tackling is at 96 so if i'm playing aldair as a as a destroyer you can either go a few more into lower body or you can go one more into defending and then maybe two more into dexterity which is where i'd probably go with him i know i said not to use um into acceleration but to be honest there's nowhere else to train him what you want to be looking for if you have a center back that's a destroyer is speed minimum 85 acceleration minimum 75 and then his physical contact his tackling his aggression and defensive awareness as close to 90 plus as possible that is where i would build him sim like if you're looking for saliba right saliba is going to be a build-up he doesn't have as many levels this is the free saliba the build-up a build-up is more passive I'll, the, obviously the graphics there that you're seeing that's kind of describing what the player does he actually has from the rip 785 speed but if you put his acceleration at 75 it's not really going to make a difference to this card because the way he's built because he's just a big lump of a, of a fella so what you need to do is you need to maximize his defensive awareness here his defensive awareness if you pop 10 into that is going to go all into the 90s with the boost 91 defensive awareness 92 tackling 90 aggression 90 defensive engagement 85 speed so you're definitely on it. But what you need with this player as well is you probably need to get his aerial strength up as much as you possibly can if you want to get those boosts. So physically, he's going to be very, very strong. Jumping is going to be quite decent as well. Um, acceleration at 75 is enough, but you're looking for a different thing with Saliba here. So his defensive awareness for a build-up is going to be most important. So I would probably go with that route, and then I would probably pop on one or two more for his acceleration just to get his, or his speed. So you're going to have 88 speed, 94 defensive awareness, 95 tackle, 93 aggression, and 93 defensive engagement. Saliba's real kind of like a, a go-between because he's got insane speed and brilliant tackling, but he's a free player, so he's not going to reach those heights that somebody like, you know, I don't know, like 102 overall build-up will, will, will reach. Um, Maldini, again, he's down as a destroyer, so we're pretty much going to copy Aldair's. Once we have the speed at 85, we're going to just throw the rest of the stats in wherever we need to throw them. So you're going to probably pop maybe about 9 or 10 into lower body, um, which is going to be 84, 85. That's going to give us a little boost there if we want to do that. And then also, once we have that, we're just going to turn our attention. So he already has 75 acceleration. And then we're also going to just throw in a lot into his defending here. If you're worried about jumping with any player, like jumping doesn't really come into it unless you're playing against somebody that is using a specific target man. And most, I would say 90% of people don't use knock-ons apart from corners and don't use target men that way. You will very rarely come up against somebody that is using from the rip that isn't using from the rip on the ground running gun center forwards. Romario, Saviola, Michael Owen, Davavia. It's very rare that you'll come up against, you know, Shevchenko, Drogba, Cantona, Stoichkov, any of those that are good in the air. Dennis Law is a bit of a go-between because he can do both. But I'm talking about pure target men. You don't need jumping as much because the jumping stat at the moment needs massive work because of the physicality. Um, and I, I put up clips of collar losing aerial battles. You still want your you still want your jumping to be fairly high and your physical contact to be fairly high. Um, if you want to go that route, you can still go that route with a lot of the cards. But I definitely think jumping, you know, at eighty five is enough for where the gameplay is at at the moment. Again, across all our centre backs here, starting with Turam, we've got ninety speed, a hundred tackling. We've got eighty five speed, ninety seven tackling. We've got 88 speed with 95 tackling, and we've got 85 speed with 99 tackling. So what you're going to have to do with your destroyers, 
Aldoyera Maldini is control the whole play manually and just defend manually and let him win the ball. Rudiger is another example of that if you wanted Rudiger. Now, some people will ask as well, well, why not actually flip it and use your center backs here and have an outlet? This is what I like to do. I probably wouldn't really recommend this as much if you're conceding a lot of goals, but it's similar to this. If you find that you're getting a lot of joy down the wing, you can actually make a change and bring off Maldini or bring off one of your, your fourth center backs who's acting as a hybrid fullback and just go balls to the wall with, um, with a build like this where you're going to be getting max acceleration, you're going to be getting max everything. You can still have a bit of defending and still have a bit of stuff going on there, but you are essentially going to be looking to use Roberto Carlos as your outlet. So you'd be defending with a back three and you're using Carlos manually to bring the ball up the pitch. And that's going to link up with, you know, whoever's down your left flank. He's going to be switching across the flanks there. And he's going to be linking up with your three-man midfield. Um, and even putting true balls through to your centre-back. You're not going to be doing that with Maldini. Do you know what I'm saying? Maldini is going to be essentially a fourth-man centre-back that you're going to be attacking with with all of these players here. These five. So Hullet, Son, Romario, Messi and Gerrard. And you're going to be defending with five. If you feel like you're on top or you're chasing the game, you feel you're better than an opponent and you know you can score goals, then you can go a little bit more attacking. You're not going to be then worried too much about his aggression or his defending or his tackling. You can get it to a certain degree, but it's going to be mostly about his speed, his acceleration and getting the ball up the pitch um, offensively. You're not going to be worried too much about anything else. 99 speed, 99 kicking power, 97 stamina. 85 aggression is more than enough you can cover every blade of grass and then i would probably pop the rest into the passing if you want to go that route for crossing in the ball um, and just switching things up there's a lot to like about this card um it, it just depends on how you want to train them up but that is kind of where i would go with a lot of these cards is that if they have one role that they're going to be doing that is where you need to go with it and it's similar to if you wanted to change Turam, right to you know be a little bit more aggressive you could switch Turan back in there and go to a build-up and a defensive fullback, and then you could bring on somebody like Wambasaka. That even though Carlos is playing as a fullback and Wambasaka is down as a fullback, these are going to be doing very different roles. So we're not too focused on his speed here. We'll get it up to a certain level, right? But what we want to do with Wambasaka is we want to have him as our ultimate defender. So we're going to be throwing in probably 15 into his defending here. Maybe not 15, but close to that and bring up his tackling and his aggression as high as we possibly can, while still having his speed as high as we possibly can, and his stamina fairly high as well. We don't need passing, we don't need dribbling too much. Dexterity, we can go eight with that. Lower body, we can go a few bits with that. Aerial strength, we can go a bit with that. Defending, you can still go high with that if you want to. But this Wambasaka is going to be like a very, very defensive fullback, whereas Carlos is going to be a very, very attacking fullback. So it's pick your poison, pick what you want to do. There's a big difference between these two cards, even though they're both full backs, you can see the discrepancy. Speed, Carlos is going to destroy him. Acceleration, kick and power, because he's going to be attacking. But defensively, Wambasaka has got the stats of a center back, but the versatility of a full back and the movement of a full back. So that's kind of full backs, center back sorted and pair in sorted if you want to stay playing the way that works right, in the we're game. We're going to move on. We're going to kind of focus now on our defensive setup, right? So we're going to do two options. The first is going to be a very simple double pivot, which a lot of people are no longer using with an attacking midfielder right here. And then the second one is going to be just a single pivot where we have a one holding. So in my opinion at the moment, I would say that the double pivot is slightly outdated, just a little bit. It's not massively outdated. Um, but what you need to have is a double pivot here, which is a DMF, which is going to be an anchorman, and either a DMF or a CMF, that's going to be a destroyer or else a box to box. So for example here, we could put Vieira in there, we could also put Steven Gerrard in there, it doesn't really make a difference what DMF or CMF we have, as long as we're playing him as a linkman. So what I mean by a linkman is, we are going to be defending with our anchorman, and we're going to be linking all these forward with this. So, if you're playing a double pivot, you need to defend as a five with your anchorman and your CBs and your right backs or whatever. And you need to attack with a five, which is going to be your attacking midfielder, your center midfielder carrying the ball, passing and dribbling and getting back in defensive duties as well. But the main objective is to get the ball through to these. Any other play style we'll cover in a second. But this double pivot here of box to box or destroyer are doing pretty much the same role. Okay. So, for example, my main kind of guys at the moment are going to be Vieira and probably Steven Gerrard for that role, and then Rijkaard for a holding. 
if you are playing a single pivot, I would recommend using an all-rounder like Vieira, which a lot of the top guys are doing. For right card, it's very, very simple. You're following the same path as a CB training. So you're going to be getting uh, high defending, you're going to be getting a good bit of physical, con physical contact, um, and you're also going to be getting his speed up fairly high as well. So this is basically where you're going to go with it. 85 speed, uh, physical contact over 85 as well, high stamina, you're also going to have his aggression and his tackling quite high. So we would probably pop in another maybe four into this. Maybe five. It depends if you're going for that route. We would probably pop in that there as well. Now you've got all his defensive stats pretty decent. His low pass, his tight possession pretty decent. His speed pretty decent. If you're playing a DMF here, I would also recommend maybe pop in and have 75. You're, you're basically copying the same si system here. Look, if you look at the system here, you're basically putting your anchorman as an extra center back right you're not really focused too much on his passing his tight possession you can counteract that with player skills such as low lofted such as true and weighted pass you've got your low pass at 80 you've got your head and your physical contact very similar to a center back you know the stamina is going to be one thing we need to train up with uh Rijkaard here to get his speed up a little bit higher but his acceleration is going to be pretty decent at that and we still have room to grow with this card right so we're, not, we're literally just going to be using this card to sit in front of our CBs. He's going to be here when we have no possession. That's basically what we're going to do with him. That's, that is essentially what we're going to have. Um, and then we're going to use Vieira to bring the ball forward, right? This right card here has no real weakness. So if we pop three more into his aerial strength, or even two more into his aerial strength, we're going to get uh, some good um, speed here. And we're going to probably pop one more in here to his defense. And then I would say we could pop a few more into his passing if we want to go that route, or else we could go with the jump. Like, I know I'm kind of contradicting myself by saying you don't need jump, but I still do like having 90 jump for your DMF. This is a phenomenal card. Absolutely phenomenal card. Now, there's two things you can also do with your DMF if you're playing a double pivot, and there are two things that I would recommend if you are playing a team play style that is not long ball counter. If you're playing long ball counter, you can skip this step because your defensive line is going to be automatically super deep. So right card is going to get back and you're going to want to keep players pushed forward. It's a deep sitting defensive line. If you're playing quick counter, possession game, or out wide, I would recommend to use this, which is going to be an individual instruction and it's going to be, count it's going to be deep line on right card there for your defensive one and it's going to be defensive on here. Now, there is one issue that comes from this as well is that when you are using deep line with defensive, you kind of have to let your center backs, you have to control one center back or else your DMF at all times when you're defending manually because there is a gap that's left here in the little section between your center backs and your DMF that they won't isolate the same space. They will keep out of each other's way. So that can actually create more space if you are using that. And really top class players, I'm talking like the top 500 in the world, will be able to exploit that um, if you don't do it. Also, with that as well, I would, if you're playing a def uh, destroyer center back, if Costa Corta or whoever, whichever destroyer you're playing, if that's Maldini or if it's uh, Rudiger, any of your destroyer center backs while we're talking individual instructions, I will put defensive on that as well. It just keeps the player from pushing forward. That's all it does. If you're playing long ball counter, you can actually have uh, Vieira with attacking if you want to go that route. But for that, I would 100% put defensive on right card and deep line on right card because you're going to be defending with a five, you're going to be attacking with a five. And that's where your goals are going to come from and your goals are going to be stopped from. You're going to be conceding less with that if you're playing anything. If you're playing long ball counter, I would go the other route. As simple as that. And also with this, with Vieira, if you are using Rijkaard in this and defending with five, I would put Vieira as a little bit more attacking. Yes, you can go really, really high with the defending. But again, what are we going to go for here? Physical contact, speed. We're going to get that speed up to about 85. We're going to get his dexterity up to about 85. And this build is going to be our launch pad for it. So now we've got 90 aggression, 85 speed, 85 acceleration. Physical contact is really nice. Stamina is really nice. We need a little bit more ball winning with this guy and a little bit of more ball playing. So we can do that if we want to. We can actually go with tight possession. We can bring the lower body back up as well a little bit and still pop one more into defending because we know we're playing a secondary role with him defensively you're not going to get him as attacking as this if you want to get his defense higher than 91 aggression or 95 tackling that's more than enough in my opinion because you're using him as a double role now if you are using Vieira as a single pivot right which a lot of people are now doing and they're pushing an attacking midfielder up here 
or else they're even going like this and going central, right? If you're doing that, this Vieira build kind of changes because you need to be able to cover a bit more ground with him. So you're not going to need to focus too much on the dexterity. You're going to have the lower body here, which is going to be this, right? So you're going to have 85 speed. You're going to maybe pop one more into acceleration just to bring that up to the 80, just to round it off and get it nice and proper there. The balance, I would like to balance at 70, but we'll see for the time being. I'm not too concerned about that. Physical contact, I'm probably going to go maybe about four into that and see where we land. Are we going to get the, the 90? We are with, with Guardiola. Jumping at 75, we'll look at that in a second. But mostly what we're going to be doing here is not focusing on passing, dribbling, or dexterity. The rest of the skills are going to passing are, are going to go into defending. How high can we go on the defending? Probably we're okay with that. That's probably where we'll go with it, I would say, is around that mark which is 16 or is 12 into defending. That's going to give us 99 tackling, 95 aggression, 91 defensive engagement, and 86 defensive awareness, 85 speed, 80 acceleration. And then if we want, we have the physical contact up. If we want to go any higher than that, it just depends on what style of player that you want to have. We've still got 18 points. So we can actually get the dexterity up one to bring his balance up to 70 if we want to go that route. And if we want to, we can bring his jumping up a little bit as well. But I would potentially probably, if I'm using him as my single pivot, I would pro potentially probably bring up his speed. So when you bring up the speed here to this, that's going to put you, at, or sorry, 90 speed. That's going to put him into a really nice uh, separation. A lot of people have questioned this build with the 90 speed. Trust me on this build with Vieira, lads. This Vieira as a single pivot, I think is the best player in the game. With the 90 speed and the 99 tackling. I think this is the build, honestly. I genuinely think this is the best card in the game, even better than right card. And you still have, with the tight possession and the low pass, you still have two into passing to get him to the 80. You've got your tight possession at 81 and his low pass at 80. Kick and power at 85, you'll be able to spray balls around. And any weakness he has as a single pivot here, you throw true passing and blocker on him, he can link all the attack and play while still being deep. And of course, we're just going to go back to our tactics here. Individually, we're going to leave that on our destroyer. I know that Costacourt is not a destroyer, but we're just going to switch this with Vieira. And then we're going to be replacing this with Vieira as well. Any player that you have in that role is going to be similar. So that's kind of your two double pivot and a single pivot, right? Then what we do is, if you wanted to, right, there's a lot of questions that people are going to ask about orchestrators and about uh, build up and about any of those, right? Box to box or whatever. I've already covered box to box with the destroyer. Destroyer and box to box are pretty much the same. Orchestrator is going to be a slightly different thing, right? If you're using an orchestrator, you will not have as much defensive capabilities with him. Like Albertini is a good example there. Camavinga is a good example there. The new Modric. Say for the new Modric, if we're using the new Modric, right? And you've got your heart set on using an orchestrator instead of a whole player. I would only ever play Modric in this role. I wouldn't play him defensively. Um, where he's gonna, you know, carving out a little bit of defensive capabilities. Because you can play Hullet there, and Hullet will have more than enough to defend. He's got 74 and pretty much everything, uh, but we can train that up quite easily. Very, very easily. This Modric card here, you're gonna have 29 levels, right? No matter what you do with this Modric card, you're not gonna be able to get him up to the level that you need to be competing at a top class level in terms of playing him above a box to box or a destroyer. Now, if you're playing a single DMF, I would recommend using a whole player for the runs that the player IDs make with an orchestrator. Um, or sorry, with a box-to-box. -box. So I would have, you know, a box-to-box -box or a destroyer, which is going to be Vieira if you're playing a single pivot. And then I would have a kind of a complete creative here. This is going to be an orchestrator and a creative player. Classic number 10 would be similar to orchestrator um, and basically just be able to kind of run into the box. But you see with Modric straight away. No matter what you do at Modric, lads, you're never going to be able to make him all-rounder. Even if you put 19 of his points into this, it's not a bad card, but it's like, why would you train this card to only have 80 aggression and 67 speed because nothing else has gone into anything? You know, you don't need to. So if you are looking to be a bit more aggressive from an attacking midfielder point of view or an orchestrator, I would definitely play him as a deep passer. That is kind of where I would go with him. So I would pop maybe four or five into passing. Bring that lofted pass up to 90. Bring his low pass to 94. You can pop one more in if you wanted to. We're going to pop three into tight possession and dribbling. That's going to bring us up to the 90 mark for ball control, 91 for tight possession with the boost. And then the rest of the stats, I'm probably going to just train up his dexterity. 
We're probably going to go 12 and 12 here. And that's basically going to fi finish off this card for us. Yes, we can do a bit of shooting as well, but you're not going to be shooting as much as Modric. He's a passer. So now you've got 90 ball control, 91 type possession, 90 loft to pass, 98 balance, 85 attack and awareness, 85 acceleration, and 88 kicking power. That's as good as you're probably going to get an orchestrator. Same applies for a classic number 10. Same applies for any of those players. You're going to be picking your poison with them. Like, if you are looking for an orchestrator that is going to be, like, let's just say, right, Albertini, right? Albertini as an orchestrator is very, very decent. He pretty much has every stat that you could possibly want. He can play DMF. Pirlo is another great example that is an orchestrator, but is more like an all-rounder. I would think of an orchestrator that is over 100 rating, like Pirlo and Albertini. They're not even orchestrators. They're like all-rounders. They can do everything. They're like Roger Federer in, in, in tennis. They can do everything, you know? And that's the thing. There's no weaknesses with these cards. You can train up Albertini very, very nicely here, even though we've given him 9 into defending and 10 into lower body, 8 into dexterity and dribbling. This is going to give you a card that has got 95-plus ball control, 90-plus tight possession, low pass and lofted, set piece and curl, Everything in the 80s for his defense, 90 acceleration, 85 speed, 90 stamina. And that is as pure esque as you can get. But if you are using a card like this, it's more about creating a kind of a little kind of triangle with your three-man midfield. So it's more about kind of having a little back five here, including Vieira as your single pivot, and then obviously having your two kind of all-rounders. One to finesse the ball through, and one to power the ball through. One to run and defend and do it all like Hollett. And one to be able to finesse the ball through like Modric. And that's basically where you go. Same with a creative playmaker. You're replacing Hollett with a creative playmaker here. You can, act, you can put in Gerrard. It doesn't matter. The same rules apply. With Steven Gerrard here, you're going for an all-rounder. And if you even auto-allocate, which I don't usually do, on this Steven, G, Steven Gerrard card, you're, you're getting a really good... Apart from the defending being way too high because he's down as a CMF here... He's going to be a really good uh, defensive player while still having 88 speed and 79 acceleration. I would probably train him up slightly different than that just because I feel like that defending is too much. But if you put 8 into defending, you put 8 into lower body, you put 8 into dex, you put maybe... I would probably okay with the tight possession at like 80 that and then the rest into passing. You could go like that even without the finishing and you'll have a very decent card. 90 lofted pass, 92 defensive awareness, 84 aggression, probably 88 speed and 83 acceleration. But what you're going to want to do is basically carry the ball with Jared, if that makes sense. This is going to be your passing, you know, uh, front man, and this is going to be your all-rounder, getting back to mop up this area right here and also being able to bring the ball forward here, being able to shoot, pass, dribble, cross, everything. Now, I prefer... Doing a squad like this, where I have a very simplified version of the team, and I would probably play Makalele. So I would have one hold in DMF, and then one chase in DMF. If I'm tra training up a destroyer to chase the ball, it's going to be slightly different than a blocker. So yes, I can go very, very high with the aggression and the tackling, but it's going to be more about his um, speed and just being rapid on the ball. So for example, with Makalele here, Makalele is going to have 92 acceleration, 90 speed, 101 stamina, every defensive stat into the 90s and then the rest of his stats is going to be like here if you're going for this and the passing like it's a very very solid build very solid build there but Makalele is doing a different role he's carrying the ball forward even though he can't play as a CMF he's going to play as a DMF I'm manually carrying the ball forward Makalele and then of course you can just swap these out very easily and you can have Vieira carry the ball forward and just train Vieira's speed a little or his attacking abilities a little bit different that's basically the best formation for possession, in my opinion, where you've got a holding, you've got a blocking and a holding that's going to fill in as a backman here into the five when you're in possession, out of possession, and then you're attacking with a five that can do it all. Cover every blade of grass, height, strength, physicality, speed, power, passing, dribbling, shooting, everything. Vieira has only got 65 shooting, but with stunning shots, you don't need to because you're going to be passing off to Albertini here or you can play Stevie G here. If you're playing Stevie G in this position here as an attacking midfielder, you're just up in his um you're up in his finishing. That's all you're doing. You know, you're up in his finishing and taking away a little bit from his passing and stuff like that. Finishing at 75, I would probably go a little bit more and less defending. But it depends on what players you're training. But that's basically your three-man midfield. A lot of people actually like now, they like the classic number 10s. So just to round that off with the classic number 10, we have whole player in classic number 10. Whole player is very, very nice, but whole players are covered in a lot of 
you know, there's a lot to like about the whole players. But if you are playing a classic number 10, which has been buffed, it's all about getting shots on target. If you don't shoot, I wouldn't play a classic number 10. If you don't want your attacking midfielder bombarding forward into the six-yard box, looking for simple tap-ins, I wouldn't use a classic number 10. If you want a hole player, it's going to be similar. Hole player is kind of like a winger in the middle of the pitch. That's basically what they are. So any of these, Honus, Cruyff. This Cruyff is a really nice card because you can train in multiple ways. If you look at that. 90 speed, 96 acceleration, 95 balance. He's got the passing, he's got the loft, the pass, he's got everything. You know? It's all about the runs. If you let the players make the runs, they will do a lot of their work for you, a whole player in a classic number 10. But I definitely think that the double pivot here is where you want to go. And if you look at a lot of the top players in the game at the moment, even the top rank or the top two ranks or whatever, right? If you look at a lot of the way that these set up their system, it's usually either one holding, like what we just replicated there. You've got Rodri as a holding, getting back, defending as a five. Four centre-backs, and Rodri is a fifth centre-back. You go into the next setup, you're going to have a very similar setup here, right? You're going to have a very similar setup here. You've got your four centre-backs, and Davids and Kimmich are going to be a double pivot. So it's either going to be one single pivot, one single holding, all-rounder, or a double pivot. That's basically where it's at now at the moment. And I would say that the double pivot is, is kind of making a slight comeback um, because the game is so centre-based. You know, if you look at any of the centre-based here, Top five in the world, this guy, Belvone88, he's using Vieira as a single pivot with Modric and Kaka. And again, he's got a four-man centre center back. So that is essentially what you're going to be looking at there from your setup, no matter what you do. is either a single pivot or a double pivot. If you're using a single pivot, you can get a little bit more extravagant um, and defend as a little bit more flat. And you could take out Makalele and you could bring in, you know, an orchestrator and a box-to-box, -box, or you could bring in, you know, somebody like Steven Gerrard or any of those, all-rounders. You know, box-to-box, -box, Barella is a really good player as well. Any of those that can do it all, if you want to go that route. You can go a little bit more extravagant because you're going to be chasing the ball around with one player and having a lot of defense. You're going to be holding with another player and blocking all the passing lanes with the long Fiera or right card. If you don't have any of the, pay, like the, the paid players or the kind players, Zakaria is a good option. Uh, Rodri is a good option, GP. But yeah, that is kind of the midfield positions covered. Wingers and left midfielders will cover with that section next. If we're looking at wingers, and if you're playing either the meta, which is three tucked in, strikers or two center forwards and a SS, or if you're playing an out wide formation, right, where you're playing a left winger, or else you're playing two inside as a double pivot, a lot of people are now using something like this, where they'll go like with one small, one tall, so you can have a target man inside, such as Rummy or Drogba or Shevchenko, an all-rounder, with somebody that's mobile and versatile. So you've got a double pivot attack with an overloaded left wing, um, or else you can play an overloaded right wing or whatever you want to do. It doesn't make a difference. But usually most people are playing three central figures in the middle. Just for argument's sake, we're going to cover everything. We're going to cover an out-wide cut-in. We're going to cover an out-wide crossing. We're going to cover an SS uh, triple threat up front. And we're going to cover a target man and a run and gun. So when I say run and gun, we are going to be talking about Romario. But we're also going to be throwing in Michael Owen into the same scenario. And we're going to be throwing in somebody like Dennis Law who can do it all. Run and gun on the ground. Or Saviola. It doesn't make a difference. It literally does not make a difference, right? Drogba is going to be our target man. Rummy is going to be our all-rounder. And Shevchenko is going to be all-rounder. There's three types of strikers in the game, Right? There is a pace, cut in and shoot, such as Sun. There is a mobile run and gun, such as Romario, Saviola, Michael Owen, the new David Villa. Then there is an all-rounder, such as Shevchenko slash Targaman. Shevchenko, Drogba, Collar. Um, somebody that can shoot the minute they get the ball. You're not going to be running and gunning with them. Because if you look at the stats, the discrepancy between a Romario and a Shevchenko, even though they're both, like if I, if I just reset Shevchenko here, which we're going to be doing, and I compare them from their base levels. Like, no matter how you train Shevchenko, you are not going to get the mixture of stats with Romario from Shevchenko. And that's because Shevchenko is way taller, he's way stronger, he's not as agile, he's not as run and gun, he's not as pick and pop, he's not whatever you want to say here. Finishing is going to be identical or very close. Tight possession, plus nine from Romario. You've also got the acceleration is similar, but the speed, Shevchenko is going to be way faster than him, but Romario will still handle a lot better and more mobile. So that's where stats come into it. It's AI, player style, player ID, 
everything like that. And then obviously you can circumvent a lot of that with the player skills. We've given Romario double touch, flip flap and soul control for ball roll. You can do that with Shevchenko as well if you want to give him flip flap and uh, double touch. But Shevchenko is going to handle it in a different way. And then again, that is that gap widens even more if you were to replace Shevchenko with the likes of Drogba. Because Drogba is obviously not going to be able to have that balance or tight possession anywhere near Romario. So, if you are training a target man, we'll start with the most boring one of all, which is not boring, but it's very easy to train a target man. I know a lot of people like Drogba. Um, I do too, but I don't think that he's kind of like the meta in the game at the moment. Mainly because crossing at the moment is completely busted. You can literally cannot cross on a consistent basis to your target man at the moment. Yes, he's big and strong. Yes, he can bang the goals in wherever he wants, but tight possession and balance is going to kill him. You'll see the balance there. That even if we get this up to, say, 75, the dexterity, um, or even pop three more in to get the balance up and max out his attack and awareness, that's a bigger stat. 80 acceleration is pretty decent. Physical contact is pretty decent off the rip. Jumping, we're probably going to pop three into that. So that's going to give us a 90 jump, 95 physical contact, 91 jump, I should say. And then also on top of that, the 90 finishing is going to be more than enough. But no matter what we do, we're not going to be able to train up his tight possession as high as we need it. And we're not going to be able to train up... Well, like, the tight possession going to that is pretty decent. Um, but we're not going to be have, able to have his speed or his dexterity up to the levels that we need it. If that makes sense. So you're going to have 79 speed, 78 acceleration, or the other way around. 80 speed, 80, 80 stamina, roughly. 80 acceleration. But the big key with having a target man goal poacher or a target man, you know, actual target man is that the minute you get the ball, you're either going to be just pressing square to shoot, or you're going to be laying it off for somebody else to shoot. It's a target man. So that's why I don't really recommend these uh, target men at the moment, unless you're playing a double pivot, with one versatile player up front. A lot of people are now using three all-rounders up front, that can shoot, score, pass, dribble, move, versatile. It's very rare that you'll come up against somebody using a target man effectively, consistently. Yes, you can do it, of course, if you're a really good player. But, I would probably go with that, and then I would just probably max out uh, the rest of his heading. Because there's nowhere else to really pull it. Shooting at 90 more is going to be not that big of a deal. Dribbling, you're not going to get that much higher than that. You've already maxed out his attack and awareness. So you don't need any more than that. You don't need passing. You don't need any more speed. The dribbling, you could put, pop that in. And you could also pop in maybe one more into jump. That's going to pretty much max out his physical contact, his jumping and his heading. With finishing at 90, speed and acceleration at 80 and 80. But they don't really work at the moment. That's why I'm not going to spend too much time on them. For a Mario, you can insert Owen, Saviola, um, the new David Villa, any of them cards, right? Mbappe to a certain degree. What the difference is between these cards is the fact that they just train up so well that you're able to hit so many targets with them and be able to just have them balance perfectly. 93 attack and awareness, 90 acceleration. We'll pop two more into balance to get his balance up there, right? If we want to go that route, we can. Or two more, sorry. Two more into balance is going to be seven into dexterity, ten into dribbling. We're also going to pop a few more in here to get his speed and his stamina up because we want to be running a good bit of him. Now, straight off the rip here, 90 speed, 92 acceleration, 90 balance, 95 attack and awareness, 93 ball control, 86 dribbling, 91 tight possession. We'll pop three more into shooting here. That's going to round off the card very nicely. We don't need passing. We've 91 finishing there now as well because of the boost with Pep. And then we're going to pop, probably pop a few more in here to get that dribbling up as high as we can. Look at that for a card. There is literally no weakness in that card. Absolutely none. Speed 90, 92 acceleration, 95 awareness, 96 ball control, 90 dribbling, 94 tight possession, 91 finishing. Rounded off with the skills and the fact that he's a fox in the box. Double touch, flip flap. Uh, we've given him soul control. Long range curler. He is outside curler and first time shot. Acrobatic finishing. We've given him dip and shot. Long range shooting and chip shot control with heading. Aerial superiority, maybe. One touch pass is what we're waiting on this card, but it's a beautiful card. And that extends to any of these center forwards that you have that you're going to be basically using to run and gun. You're talking about Rodrigo. You're talking about Saviola. If you look at Saviola, goal poacher versus Fox in the box. Look at the stats. 90 attack and awareness. 93, 93, 92 for ball control, dribbling and tight possession. 91 finishing. 101 acceleration, 91 speed, 98 balance. Very, very similar cards. Double touch, heel trick. We can give him soul control and flip-flap if we want. Striker's instincts versus agility. 
And that's basically what you want to be doing in this, if you want to go that route. Because it's very similar, any of these cards. Any of them cards that you have there are going to be similar. It doesn't matter how you train them once you're hitting those key points of 90 and 90 across pretty much everything. Acceleration, balance and tight possession with 90 finishing is the key to these cards. You don't need as high attack and awareness because you're going to be manually running and gunning with them. Whereas Drogba, you're going to be letting the AI make the runs for you and then just picking him out. Once he gets the ball, it's either square to header or volley if it's in the air or X or whatever to knock down to another player. But when you get the ball with Saviola, you're touching and going. You're moving, you're versatile, you're rapid. And all of these players are the same. It doesn't matter what player that you use. Mike alone the same, right? If we just put Mike alone in here very, very quickly, he's already got speed and acceleration up, but we need the dexterity. So if we pop dexterity up, the problem with Mike alone is a problem that a lot of these cards have, right? Is that to get 90, to get 80, to get 90 balance at Mike alone, you have to make a couple of um, decisions because you can't get them all, all the stats up here. So this is 91 type possession with 86 balance with 99 acceleration. And then we need another five into shooting if we want to go that route. But this is a phenomenal card. 90 finishing, 91 type possession. We could even go a little bit less on that if you wanted to, because we could actually get the dexterity up here. Like this is a phenomenal card with Pep. 92 balance, 101 acceleration. But again, we're hitting those key targets. 90 plus type possession, finishing, balance, acceleration. A bonus is ball control and dribbling and speed at 90. And then the rest of the card here is phenomenal. First time shot. We obviously need to train up his skills. But I definitely think that that's where to go with your mobile center forwards. And obviously he's going to be 100 as a CF there. Now for the wingers, you've got two choices. The first winger is a cut in. So basically you pass the ball, you beat a man, you cut in, you're taking a shot. That's what you're going to be doing. And this Sun, we've tried out so many different builds of this Sun. It's just a phenomenal card. Once you have the tight possession up to where you want it to go, and you have the dexterity up where you want it to go, the rest of the card becomes very easy to train up. Now, we've even gotten one too much in the dribbling there, right? So let me just change that real quick. So we've got 14 into the dribbling is what we need. 14 and 9. Because you get the boost with Pep. You need the 15 if you don't have Pep or Xabi Alonso. That's going to give us 90 type possession, 90 finishing, 90 acceleration, 91 kick and power, 84 speed. So with the speed here, if we pop 5 into that, which is quite easy, we're now going to have a card that's 90 speed, 96 kick and power, 90 curl, 90 finishing, 86 stamina, 79 balance. I would pref preferably, because of this card here, I want to get the balance up as high as I possibly can on this Sun card. I know a lot of people will say, oh, why not a bit of passing? Why not more shooting? You don't need more than 90 finishing, in my opinion, especially with a Blitz Curl or for your cut-in wingers. They're probably going to be your third option, unless you're dedicating your entire play to doing that, you know? That's basically what I would say about that. It's, it's, it's kind of a similar thing that you have if you're using any winger that cuts in and, and shoots. I'll show you with Neymar in a second as well. But I probably would put a few more onto this to get the balance up at least. I would like the balance for 85. I would, but you can't do that with Sun. You can get everything else pretty decent, but you can't get the balance to 84, 85 if you want to have tight possession at 90 and the speed at 90. You can't get the balance at 84, at 85. Neymar is another one, right? If you're using Neymar... And a lot of people are using Neymar now. Um, and I'll, use, I'll show you the best Neymar. So that Neymar there, the Santos Neymar, is more of a centre-forward running gun. He's a free option. But if you're using the other version of Neymar, the one that is the, the big-time box one, uh, where is he? I'll try to find him here because he, I knew I had him reset. This guy. So Neymar here is kind of a different, uh, per, a different type of player, right? He's down as a creative player. But I definitely feel like that the speed and the acceleration and the balance are perfectly tracked on this Neymar here. Because if you pop five into dex four into dexterity and four into this, with the boosters, or sorry, I need to pop two more into his speed. Five and six. Uh, into that, you're going to have 91 speed but 80 stamina, which is key. You're also going to have the kick and power. I'll probably raise that up in a second. Balance at 91, acceleration at 90, attack and awareness. We'll probably raise that up as well. Dribbling and ball control, you don't need to make too much on that. So if you pop four into that, you might as well because you've got the extra uh, few bits and pieces. We'll max that out at eight. We'll max that out at eight. And then shooting. Shooting is going to be a key with this one here because that's exactly what you want your cut in for. If you don't shoot a lot, don't waste points on shooting. 
Just use a player that is able to get around the pitch. We'll show you in a second. But that is essentially what you want to do with your Neymar. Good passing, good lofted pass, 90 finishing, 93 curl. Dribbling is all past the 90 with 96 and 97 dribbling type possession. 93 speed and acceleration. We can even pop that in two more into them if we want to. Because there's nowhere else to put it. You know? Like, that's a phenomenal card. 95 speed and acceleration with 95 plus stamina. Type possession, 97, 90 finishing. Exceptional. And that follows true for all of these cards if you're using a, a running gun. It doesn't matter what card that you have. If you're looking to cut in, it doesn't matter what card that you use. Because you're using all the same type cards. Salah is the same. It's all the same. If you're using a, a cut in, obviously you'd be switching Salah because he can't play left wing. You'd be switching him to the right. This is the build that we've gone for for Salah. It, it, once you have 90 in balance, type possession and acceleration and finishing, the rest of the stats are irrelevant really for an attacking player like this. That's kind of where you need to go with it. It doesn't matter if you play him a right winger or a left winger. It doesn't matter. Now, if you are using Figo, who's more of an outright winger, right? Or Nedved, we'll do Figo first. Figo's going to have good shooting, but he's going to be more about uh, speed and pace. Like, that's what he's going to be about. So, like, once you have his balance to a certain degree there, I would probably go with this route. You're talking about 91, 95, 92, 92, 91 for his main stats there. Because you're going this route here. The passing you don't need, the finishing, you can get the finishing as high, high, but you don't need the finishing as high, and his dribbling is going to be lovely there as well. Now, I know a lot of people will say tight possession is a bit low, his finishing is only 85, but you're playing a different role with Figo. You're not cutting in and shooting like you would with Saviola, or with Salah. Same with Nedved, the same with Messi. Any of these. So that is where it is. The only other card that I would say is if you are looking to play a crosser, such as Lu Luby Binbin, or any of these, a cross specialist. What you're going to want to focus on there is having a player that has got good player skills, right? Pinpoint crossing or any of these we've given to, given to him. But you're not going to be shooting with Luby Binbin here, in my opinion. You're not going to be shooting with him. Any of these cards, right? And that goes for Nedved as well. Nedved is going to be doing a different role. If Nedved is out here, we're going to be having Nedved as a different role. Even though he can still finish, even though he can still do all of that, it's going to be the same option there. All of these cards are going to be the same, lads. All of these cards. It doesn't make a difference what card that you have. It doesn't make a difference how you build them once you hit certain keys in that. Right? And like one of the other ones as well um, is Kiesa. Kiesa was the last of this pack that was released as a Blitz Curler. Kiesa is actually one of the best players as a super sub. He's got super sub off the rip here. Right? And fighting spirit with Blitz Curler. Kiesa as a left winger or a right winger, it doesn't really make a difference. He's right footed, so I would play him in the sun roll here. And I would probably swap him to a left wing. But it's the same rules, man. You don't need to do any finishing stats with him unless you want to get him up a little bit. And even at that, I preferably would probably keep his finishing at 90. Even though, you know, you don't need to waste those there. Dribbling is the key with uh, Kiesa. And his dexterity and his balance. So that's why I wouldn't waste him on finishing there. Because if you've got the finish in there, you'll actually get an extra point or two into balance. You know? So once you have the tight possession here at 13, I wouldn't train his shooting at all. So I put the dribble in at 13, and I put his dexterity at 8. Or no, what was his dexterity? Yeah, two more into dexterity, wasn't there? One more into dexterity. Lower body, we can drop a few into that as well. You don't need the finishing with him. This key is a booster. Uh, 89 balance I would probably go one more with the balance just because and then again you're hitting those heights again 95 acceleration 90 balance 90 type possession 91 finishing super sub with really nice card a really nice card yeah you can play him any position but I would definitely put him in if you're putting him in here you need to shoot on sight and then last but not least with the center forwards we're going to look at an all rounder so we already looked at Shevchenko a little bit from the start, but Dennis Law is a perfect example of an all-rounder, right? If you're looking at Dennis Law here, and you're popping in a couple in, into his stats here, just to kind of get him moving, just to get him going, right? And you're getting his dexterity up, and his lower body strength up. You've kind of got a car that can do it all straight off the rip. You don't need as much speed with this Dennis Law, because he's going to be finding himself, finding himself in positions that you're literally either going to be just tapping square to shoot, or laying off to somebody else to shoot. That's basically what it is, man. That's basically what it is. It's very, very easy to um, 
to play and train Dennis Law. Because if you look at Dennis Law here, he's one touch pass, he's got first time shot, he's got true passing, soul control, you can give him chip shot control, you can give him a few other bits and pieces if you want to. Um, outside curler, of course, you could give him any shooting skill that you want. But you are looking to get that balance up and that attacking awareness up. He's an all-rounder where you can literally do it all with him. You can do it all with him. And it's not going to make a big, big difference to this card if you do it, if you do it all with him. You're, he was an all-rounder. Absolutely all-rounder. A brilliant, brilliant card. It's 85 speed, 94 acceleration. You're not going to get the balance and tight possession up on this card much more than that. But what you can do is you can get his heading up a good bit as well. You can get him into the Margot Robbie style of end game level heading. So you've got 90 heading there. You've got 96 jumping. You've got 94 acceleration. You've got 81 tight possession. 85 speed, 81 balance, 88 stamina. It's a perfect card. And then if you want to train up a little bit more with the dribbling, you can do that depending on your play style. You can get that to 85. But you won't get the balance much higher than this if you want the rest of his card to be pretty decent. Ball control 86, 101 awareness, 92 finishing, 90 head, 96 jumping. Very, very solid. Now, if you are, the only other card I will focus, I will look at here is somebody like Rummy. Um, Rummy is a card that like is the same. Sorry, Rummy is the same card as Dennis Law. So you can apply all that to Dennis Law there. But the only other card that I would probably look at will be somebody like maybe Diego Forlan. Now, I'm a big fan of Forlan, right? A big, big fan of him. I think he's definitely one of the best players that I've used. I don't know how many goals I've scored with him. 52 matches, 37 goals, and 13 assists. So he's nearly averaging a goal or assist in all his games, right? A game. This is kind of how we built him. And if you look at his stats there, he's not nimble, right? He's just on that upper tier where he can still score in the air. He's like Dennis Law, but he's more about the attack and awareness. All you're going to be doing is letting the AI make the runs and popping it to him, and that's it with any of these cards and that is essentially it and then also on top of that as well I know a few people will be asking me or have been asking me about Ronaldinho like if you take a look at any of the Ronaldinho builds that we've done right and if you take a look at this Ronald B Ronaldinho this Ronaldinho is very dependent on what style of player that what style of play that you're using if you're using him in here right and you're using a very very nice like attacking uh creative playmaker I would only use Ronaldinho either as a shooting cut-in like Neymar that we built earlier or Son or else I would use him in an attacking midfielder role to be a creative player because he's got really nice low pass. He's got brilliant acceleration and balance. It's an excellent, excellent card. Ball control dribbling at level one is phenomenal. Look at this already. His ball control and dribbling is absolutely unbelievable. You pop two into this and you're going to have 91 dribbling, 91 and 95 type possession. On top of that then as well with the dexterity, you pop 8 into that, you're going to have 90 balance, 95 acceleration, you're also going to have, um, with the attack and awareness, if you want to go that route, you can pop one more into that, you can pop a few more into his speed, that's not a problem, to get the stamina up, and then the rest is going to be passing, you can do that very, fairly nicely as well, and then the shooting. Like this is a fantastic card for Ronaldinho, 80 attack and awareness, 91 ball control, 91 dribbling, 95 tight possession, 88 finishing, 96 acceleration. If you're using him in this position here, it's same rules apply, except just re reduce the passing a little bit. But if you're using Diego Forlan or using a three-man pivot here, I would always recommend to use kind of two speedy guys and then one hold-up all-rounder, whether it's a target man or whatever. Like some people will use, and it just goes without saying, some people will, you know, all, are always going to use um, like the top, 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 top players. Like Rummy is going to be in there as well with Saviola. But I definitely think that that's the better option. So boys, you made it, man. That was a huge video. One of my longest videos that we've ever done. Hopefully you guys can revisit this if you're ever, you know, asking questions or you have any questions. I think I cover pretty much everything. If I missed anything, we'll go over that in a future video where we discuss some certain things. And I'm also going to be doing another video before the free reset goes back about training all your cards. So I'm going to train maybe about 150 cards. If there's a specific card that I haven't trained, Get in touch in the comments below and let me know if you want to see him and we'll just do him. Uh, it will just be a lot of visual stuff and a lot of graphic stuff and why I'm training him the way I'm training him, but keeping it very tight and condensed with the actual speaking. So let me know if you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you like these long term ones or maybe they're just too long. Let me know. We're trying a few different things. Don't forget to smash the like button and of course subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next one.